Today we're going to look at how to do some simple calculations with a C program. So I'm running Visual Studio 2019 and I'm going to say that I want to create a new project. It remembers the default after a while, but when you're first starting up, it will want to know what kind of project you want. And it knows how to build many different types of projects. So we want an empty project. And we can search up here and it'll find empty projects. And we're looking for one that says C++ Windows Console. We select that and click Next. Now we have to put where we want our project stored, which is a directory. So I'm in Documents. I'm building some teaching materials, and this is IPC 144 or PTM 200, wherever you need it. And it's in the online stuff for week two, and it's going to put it in the source directory. SRC is short for source, and I'm going to call this simple underscore calculation, simple calculation, and click create. It'll spin for a few seconds as it goes out and creates the directories and all the files in it. And then the compiler comes up and we're ready to go. We go over here to source files, right click, add new file. Looks like a C++ file, but it's not really a C++ file. We end it in .c. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but we're going to call it calculations.c. And that tells us that it's not C++ is actually C. We're actually using a C++ compiler, but C is a subset of C++ as long as we put it in uh, the files named in .c, it'll compile it as C. So I want to add that to my project. It comes up with a nice white area for us to type our project. And we go in by defining a macro. Now we define this because Windows and Microsoft has decided that the scanf function is unsafe and they've replaced it with a thing called scanf dash underscore s. But this is not supported on the Unix machines because they're different compilers and you're going to have to move your program over to a Unix machine to get it marked. So we define this and that tells it, don't worry about it, we can use scanf relax, everything is fine. So the next thing I want to do is I want to import the standard IO library, which I do like this. And that brings in the code for scanf and printf, which we'll be looking at today. The next thing I have to do is define my main function, which is the entry point of where the program is going to start. And this says the function is called main. It has a parameter list, which is void or empty, and it returns a type int. Now, because it returns a type int, I'm going to say return zero, which will be returned to the operating system. And that's going to tell it that the program worked correctly. Zero is good. Anything else is bad, is the way the operating system interprets it. OK, so what we'd like to do is calculate the area of a circle. So we're going to start and we're going to define pi. Now pi is a constant. Nobody's changed it recently. So we can declare a variable to be constant by saying const, then give it the type double because it's got a fraction, obviously. We need to use a double. We give it a name, pi. 
and then I can initialize it. 3.14159265358979. Now oh, that's, let's just leave it there. Uh, make that nine. That's probably enough digits. Okay. Now, I capitalize pi, and anytime we have a constant, it's kind of an unwritten law in C programming that people always put constants as capitals. And then anybody who sees something written in capital says, ah, it's a constant. There's no rule that says you have to do that, but people have been doing it forever. Okay, so this declares pi to be a constant. If I tried to assign a new value to it later, I'd get an error because once you make it const, you can't reassign it. Now I'm going to declare another double. I need to know the radius of a circle, if I could spell it correctly. And I'm going to calculate the area. I'm not initializing those because I'm going to get somebody to tell me what the area or what the radius is. Given the radius, I know how to work out the area. So to read a value in from the keyboard, I use scanf. And scanf needs to know what type it's reading. So I'm going to say, this is called a format code, and I'm going to say LF. And that stands for long float. And what it means is I'm going to read a value, interpret it as a long float, which is another way of saying double. And now I have to specify the variable it's going to be placed in. And I say ampersand radius. Okay. Now, this value here, where we type in an actual number, is called a literal. I'm going to use, this is also a literal string, and I'm going to print out a prompt asking people to enter the radius of a circle. And I'm going to do the printf, use printf to do that. So I'm going to put in a character literal, and or a string literal, actually. And the string literals are in double quotes. And enter the radius. I'm going to put a colon, leave a space. And I'm not going to put a new line there because I want them to be able to type it on the same line. And then when they hit enter, that will create a new line for us. It is going to then wait for them to type something read it as a long float, and store it in radius. Note that I had to put an ampersand in there. When I'm doing scanfs, I have to put that ampersand in there. Later, we'll explain why this has to be. Right now, we're just going to say, you have to do it. But there's a good reason, which will become obvious later in the course. Okay, so now we know what the radius is because somebody typed it in and we stored it in the variable radius. Next, what I want to do is I would like to calculate the area. And I can say area is assigned and the equal sign is used for assignment. And it is pi times, and we use the asterisk to represent multiplication, the radius times the radius. And you're probably wondering why I didn't square it. That's because C doesn't have a, an operator to square. There's nothing put it to the power of 2. So we simply multiply the radius by itself twice. And that should tell us what the area is. So it's going to evaluate this left-hand side. And it's going to take pi, multiply it by the radius, and then multiply it by the radius again. And after it works all that out, it is going to assign it to the variable area. 
Okay, now we've got our calculation done and we are ready to print it out. And to print it out, I say percent %LF. But when I'm printing, I can also specify how many places I want past the decimal. And I'm going to say 0.2 for two places past the decimal, and that will round it to two places past the decimal, because it may not be a perfect number. Then I'm going to say the area is percent %LF. I'm going to print that out. And now I have to say, what variable do I want to print with that format code? So just like it matched that format code with radius, down here I get to match this format code with a variable after, and I'm going to print out area. I need a semicolon at the end of every line, so I put one in. And now my program is ready to run for the first time. Okay, so we can save it. We can build it to see if it builds correctly. And it does because it said one succeeded. If it doesn't say one succeeded, then there'll be uh, errors up there that you'll be able to look at that will give you an indication of what went wrong. Okay, now we can run our program. And to do that, I say start without debugging. And it says end of a radius. And let's say that I say my radius is three. And it says my area is 28.27. You notice it said program exit with code zero. That means everything worked correctly. And the area is 28.27. Now, the other thing I can do is I can put a new line on the end of that line. And now it'll print out a blank line after that. Now, I can't just type enter because enter is going to go to a new line on the editor, and that's not what I want. When it prints, I want it to print a new line. So I use this backslash n, which is a special called as an escape character that indicates you want to print a new line. So I can run this again, and now you won't see much difference. But you see that there's an extra line after it says the area is a blank line, and then it prints out the stuff that says it ended correctly. OK. Now, sometimes you might want to put in a value which is exact and um, Oh, let's see. Um, we'll call it day for lack of a better name. Zero X one five is a notation that says this is a literal, but it's not a base 10 number. Zero X means it's a hexadecimal number. So I just want to show you how this works. And down here, I'm going to print out. I'm going to say day equals percent D, because it's really an integer, backslash N, because I want a new line at the end of that. And I am going to say day is the variable. Now, because I specified the literal in terms of hexadecimal, which is actually a fairly rare thing to do. But sometimes programmers have to do this when they want an exact value. It's hard to get any other way. So what is 0x15 in base 10? Well, it says it's 21 if you hover over it, because the compiler is very good at telling you this. Um, yeah, it's 21, which means it's 116 plus 5 ones for a total of 21. So it should now print out day equals 21. Start without debugging. Ooh, there were build errors. So we forgot something. 
This is what happens. Do you want to run the previous build? No. You want to figure out what didn't work. So it says return value of scanf was ignored. Don't worry about that. It does return a value, and we'll be talking about that later in the course. But right now, you can forget about it. Printf has undefined. That's because it's not spelled right. I forgot the I. So that's the problem. I can't type, but I already knew I can't type. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to put the I in printf. Now it's spelled correctly. And I'm going to try and run the program again. Now the program works correctly. I say my radius, make it a bigger circle, a radius four. I can put in a floating point number there as well if I want. And it says the area is 55.42 and day equals 21 because even though I put it in hexadecimal, it converts it and stores it as a true base 10 integer. Now the next thing I want to show you is how I can print out the radius of a circle as well as its area. So I can say the area of a circle of radius, and now I want to print out another number, percent 0.2 LF is percent 0.2 LF, and what it's going to do, it's going to match them up. So I'm going to put in radius, and it's going to match them up position-wise. The first format code goes with the first variable. The second format code goes with the second variable. So they match up first with first, second with second, and the numbers have to agree. So let's run this and see how it works. End of a radius, 4.5. The area of a circle of radius 4.50 is 63.62. Now you notice it said 4.50 because I said I wanted two places after the decimal. Day is still 21 because that's just demonstrating how I can put in a literal as a hexadecimal value. Okay, so that's it. A little program works, we can save that, and that shows how we can do simple little calculations in C with Visual Studio 2019.